This is Lance Peckia. I'm interviewing Leonard John Sam Thomas Peckia. Um, could you give me your rank, Marine Division and Company that you were in? Yes, my rank was Corporal. The Marine Division was the 5th Marine Division. And, and the company? Oh, the co each company, 26 Marines. And um, th this interview is being conducted in Carlsbad, California. So, Leonard, where were you born? I was born in Nashwalk, Minnesota. What was it like growing up in Nashwalk? What was tell me tell me a little bit about Nashwalk. What was it? What kind of a city was, what oh, was it like? A, Where did a, you go to school? Yeah, it was a small town of 2,500 at that time, and you knew everybody in town uh -huh. because of the size of it, not very big. And the school was one of the top schools in the area because the mining companies supported them and they built them and every one of them had a swimming pool. Every one of them had a gymnasium and they provided for everything, fortunately, because most people in that area were from foreign countries working in the iron ore mines. Were you involved in sports in school? Oh yes. Yeah, I was involved in all of the sports in school. <laughs> they have, uh, they didn't have baseball, but we had Legion baseball during the summertime. And now I'm quite sure that they do have baseball as part of the offering. Um, the <clears throat> All of the other sports, football, track, basketball, uh, they were, every, every uh, sport was involved and considered. So you, you played basketball? Yes. And I football? Basketball, football, track. Track? Yeah. And baseball during the summer. Mm hmm Okay, could you tell me your uh, parents' names? Yeah. My parents' name was Antonio Pecchia, and my mother's name was Natalina Pecchia. And uh, did your father work? Yes, my father worked in the mines, iron ore mines. In... In, in Hibbing or Nashwalk? Well, or? but in Kiwatin, Kiwatin and Nashwalk, they had mines real close to one another, so most of the people that worked there worked in these various mines. Mm -hmm. did, did your uh, mother, was your mother working at all? No, she took care of the home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, who were your siblings? Your brothers and my brother and sister. Sister, what what were their names? John and Mary. And did any of them serve in the military? Pardon? Did did John or Mary yeah. serve in the John, military? John was in the military. Oh, what branch of service? Army. Pardon me. The, the army. The army? Yeah. Now you en enlisted in the service. How old were you when you enlisted? Oh, I was around 20, 21. And that was um, after you graduated from high school. Yes. And what did you do when you graduated from high school? After I graduated from high school, I worked for three months in the iron ore mines 
and then I uh, matriculated at, at the Hibbing Junior College for two years. Two years? And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had an affiliation with the university with the University of, of uh, Minnesota and all the other universities, but U University of Minnesota was the uh, top affiliation for having junior college. Mm -hmm. So you, you finished your two years in junior college. Yeah. And what did you do right after you finished junior college? Did you work anywhere? Uh, well, I worked for a while in the in the filling station in Nashville. In Nashville. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. And was what what time period was it? When when did it happen that you were going to be drafted? Was it during that time period? Yes. When you were working during, at the gas station. Well, or? I had a high draft number. So by the time my name was called, most of the guys were already taken because they had a lower uh, draft number. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the night before the draft was supposed to take me the following day, the Marines had me come down to Minneapolis. They gave me a physical. I passed the physical. They put me aboard a train to come out to California for basic training for the Marines. So uh, <clears throat> the And if I had, if they hadn't done that, the army was drafting me the following morning. Oh, and you didn't want to be drafted by the army? No. So well, I why, just, why not? Well, it's just one of those things at the time. You just make up your mind you, and that's what you thought the, the do. Marines would be better for yeah. you? Yeah. And uh, I'm a, World War II was going on at the time that they were going to draft you? The war had started? Oh, wait, wait, no, wait. the war, <laughs> they had, as a matter of fact, I was one of the, <clears throat> one of the replacements for the Guadalcanal Marines. I was one of the replacements for them. Oh, okay. And what happened, oh, so you went to California. The Marines took you to California right out and right that same day that you signed up. Yep. Yeah. The same night. That, that from here from Minneapolis where you went to to join the Marines, they took you right away, right? No, they, immediately to California. Where where did they take you to in California? To San Diego, basic training. To Camp Pendleton? Camp? No. No. A basic training for the. Send all the basic. Oh, 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 okay. And um, what was that like? Did you start? Did you start? Did you start basic training like the next day that they took you there? Oh, yeah. you started they, right away. They put you through the whole routine, mm -hmm. and you wondered, hey, what am I doing here? But that's what you chose. So you loved it. Was it very difficult for you? Because I know you were in good shape. You had worked in the iron ore mines. Was it still difficult for you? Physically, it was fine. No problem. No problem for you. No. 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 Did you enjoy the basic training, or what did you in, think of it? In a sense, I did, because I had two good trainers with me. So, by having the two good trainers I could talk oh. to and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and become involved with problems, they would listen and that was fine. 
like mm-hmm. along fine with them. Well, oh, good. And after you finished that, you uh, decided to join the Paramarines, right? Yeah, it, yeah, after the basic training. Was that your decision to sign up, or did they send you there? Did, they, did you decide you wanted to do that? Yeah, right at the moment, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you had this, that was your decision, and, uh, and you had agreed to that. Why, why did you think that was a good idea for you to join the Paramarines? Did it offer more of a challenge? Yeah, or it more of a challenge. It was uh, <clears throat> more of a different thing in my life. Mm-hmm. I'd never jumped out of a plane before, <laughs> so I thought the experience would be fine. Mm-hmm. Did, did they offer you more money to do that? Yes. We got flight pay. Flight pay? Yeah, flight pay. So we got you re- pay, you re- do you recall, double. How, do you recall how much that was? I think it was a hundred dollars. It was double. I think the basic was at the time fifty dollars. Oh, okay. So you you said you would you look you were enjoying the jump training. It was a challenge for you. Why why was that? Is it because it was physical or basically it was something new. Well, for it was you? something. My life had been pretty active anyway mm-hmm. before that, so I thought, well, this would be a part of my life where I would become involved in the activities of a mm-hmm. parachutist. Did you ever jump out of a plane in... No, what was the basic jump training like? Did you jump off of buildings oh, basic, or... The first was a captive tower in San Diego. What was that? That's where they took you up to about 200 feet and you were in in one of the contraptions that would set you down and and give you the feeling of, of motion up and down. Mm-hmm. And then from there, they tripped you off and you, you uh, uh, eased away from, from the tower that you were held in. Did some of the guys get hurt doing that, you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially with the free falling, mm-hmm. the bottom would... would break the fibula bone, a small bone in their leg, oh. thinking they had a sprain. And mm-hmm. after about four or five days, they had an x-ray and they found that the fibula, the small bone, had a crack in it. Oh. Oh. Oh, one thing. Did you pack your own shoots? Yes. I was wondering. We packed our own. They, so they, that was part of your training, right? Yeah. And did you? And perf- that's when, when we enjoyed doing our own because we would fluff it up a little more and it would open a little sooner. Whereas the regular packers would set it more firm and it would take a little longer to open. Oh. oh. So we, we cheated a little Who bit. Who figured that out? How did you do that? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so did, um, so that was your military life in uh, your jump training and so what was, what was it like in the, the barracks with the other guys, you know, did, did you well, get with, were they interesting? Did you get, did you meet some people from other walks of life? Oh yeah, there are certain people you associated with more and you felt more of a companionship with them. So you spent more time with them. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, 
I, I've heard that you've set up a no profanity rule at some point because they were doing using a lot of profanity. Was that during the time you were in the training? Well, that, that was a time did? when we were training and overseas. Mm -hmm. and we would <clears throat> penalize anybody coming into our tent if they use a cuss word, they put a nickel in the, in the pot. And then at the end of the month, we'd buy a case of beer or whatever we did. <laughs> and the uh, and if they refused to put money in the pot, we didn't let them in the tent oh. as part of the association with us until they paid and paid a penalty, <laughs> and they did. Did it work? Yeah, didn't it work. Worked. Do you remember? Uh, and, and it yeah. helped when we got to civilian life because of the language. You know, we didn't mm -hmm. use the cuss words. You thought about it before you used them. Did uh, any of the uh, other uh, soldiers have nicknames? And do you remember any of them? Did your instructors have nicknames? You no. Know, did they come up? Yeah. One of our uh, our troops, one of the Marines, was called Rabbit because he had his teeth were protruding a little bit, mm -hmm. so they called him Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> and. Probably the others had it, but I can't remember. Mm. Do you remember if you had one? No, not, not in the service. No? Okay. This is a continuation of an interview with Leonard John Sam Thomas Peckia. This is January 16th, 2018. My name is Lance Peckia. Leonard, what islands did you serve on in uh, World War II in combat? If I can remember that far back. Okay, you just go yeah. ahead. Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima. Gua Guadalcanal. Yeah, Guadalcanal. Uh, Bougainville? Bougainville and, and a small island. Vela La Vela? Vela La Vela. Okay. What, before, you went on the, um, before you went on any of those islands, what, was your, what were you thinking? What was your, were you anticipating going on the islands? Were you, um, we uh, didn't what, were, even, what were you thinking? We didn't even know where we were going until the last moment. Oh, is that right? Yes. Oh, so was that, were you pretty uh, scared at that time, or, or what? Were you afraid? Well, we were anticipating, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, probably, I don't know whether you were afraid or getting ready. Right, right, uh-huh. And, uh, did you, uh, when you were on the islands, did you uh, camp out on the islands? Did, did you stay in uh, camps or did you stay in uh, foxholes when you were on the... Was Iwo Jima? Yes, Iwo Jima. Oh, no, we didn't camp on there. We fought on the island. Right. Every moment. We were protecting ourselves. Mm -hmm. Did you stay in foxholes? Because they could see us very readily because we were always advancing uphill and they were underground. They mm -hmm. could see us. Okay. And did you get injured in any of those landings? Did you get injured? Did you get shrapnel wounds? Yes. Shrapnel wounds in both arms. Both arms. What was that on uh, Iwo Jima? I didn't get that. Was that on Iwo Jima? Yes. 
that you got wounded? Oh, okay. And uh, was uh, on on any of those islands? What was the most dangerous island that you were on? Which one was the most dangerous landing? Was it Iwo Jima? No, I well, think. 12 miles behind enemy lines in Bougainville. In Bougainville? Yeah. That was your most difficult landing? Yes. Did you, uh, when you landed on Iwo Jima, a lot, a lot of the, the soldiers were injured, right? They were shot, and did you see any of that happen to your fellow soldiers? I didn't hear that. Did you see your, they felt your fellow soldiers get injured on uh, Iwo Jima? The, the soldiers that were next to you, were they getting uh, shot at and injured? Yes, they were getting shot at because they were getting shrapnel and bombs and, and rifle fire. So they were getting shot at, so all of them were getting hit beside me. Or, or getting shot at. Right, uh-huh. Um, after, after you were injured, Leonard, did they take you to a hospital? Did they take you to a hospital on uh, Hawaii? Yes. For your injuries? Um, not Hawaii. It was uh, where they kept the ships. Uh, oh, in a bay? The what? Where, where they kept the ships? It was on a ship? Where the, no, they, where they sunk the ships. That's where the, they had the hospital. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I can't remember the name. That's that's okay. That's okay. Um, were you you were on a on a Higgins boat, right? A Higgins boat for the landing on Iwo Jima, where the it was a small boat that came up to the beach, and you the front of the the boat went down, and you oh, walked up on the beach. Big boat came to the beach at Iwo Jima to pick me up. No, no, when you landed on the beach. For your, for your first uh, uh, landing on the beach, you used the Higgins boat? Did what? How did you land on the beach? Well, on the Higgins boat. Right. Right, and there was mortar fire and rockets and bombs. Um, where, so that... Yeah, everything was thrown at us. Uh -huh. Did you ever see any of the Japanese soldiers? Yes. I saw, saw one pop out of the hole and ignite a hand grenade on his helmet. Uh-huh. And before he could throw it, I was able to get rid of him. Oh, okay. Um, do you remember running into somebody you knew from your hometown? Yes. In uh, yeah, could you tell me about that? How that happened? How did that happen? Did when I dove into a bomb hole with about four or five other uh, Marines in there, and I hit helmet to helmet, and it happened to be. I can't remember his name. Oh, oh, but he was from your hometown in Minnesota? No, oh. he's from Calumet about 12, 10 miles oh, away. Cal Calumet? Calumet. You were from, uh, what city were you Nashwalk. from? Nashwalk. Nashwalk? How did you know him before the war? Did you go to school with him? Did, did you go to school with that person? No. 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 I went to... Did, I went to... 
to Green Bay, Wisconsin, to play football. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I decided to drop and go to Detroit. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, um, did you uh, see the flag raising on Iwo Jima? Did you see them raise the flag? Yes. Yeah, could you tell me how that happened? We withdrew about a hundred yards with, and stood up and waved to the Marines who were raising the flag. Mm hmm. So that's what we did as a line. And then we went back to the line and started our fire again. Oh, we oh. Started okay. our advance. Um, you were awarded a, a silver star, right? Yes. And uh, here's your silver star. Can you hold that up for us so we can see it? And uh, Purple Heart, too. He's a little higher. Yeah, right there. Silver stars on on in his right hand. And the Purple Heart is in his left hand. Okay. Thank you, Pop. And uh, could you tell me how you, what, what, why did they award, award you the Silver Star? How did, how did, what did you do to earn the Silver Star? Could you tell me about that? I went out to try to save one of the Marines, one of the Marines in my squad, I tried to pull him back and he must have been about 20 feet in front of the lines. Why he was that far, I don't know, but he crawled out there and got hit on the helmet and I saw it be hit. And I decided to go out and help help him by dragging him back. But dragging him back was a big problem mm -hmm. because of the rough terrain. Okay, could you show the picture? Show that to, to him. So that's your mother right there? Is that no. your Yeah. Okay. Hold that up, John, right next to his. That's showing. Yeah, tip it a little bit. This. Tip it. Yeah, right there. That shows um, Leonard's mother and with the uh, silver star that Leonard's holding in his hand. When he was awarded the silver star, yeah. his mother was there. And. Uh, Here's the, uh, hold this up, John. Oh, okay. This is the text of his Silver Star Commendation Award, and I'll read it right now. It's from the President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Silver Star Medal to Private First Class Leonard J. S. T. Pecchia, United States Marine Corps Reserve, for service as set forth in the following citation. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity while serving as leader of a fire group of Company H, 3rd Battalion, 26th Marines, 5th Marine Division in action against enemy Japanese forces on Iwo Jima, Volcano Islands, 2 March 1945. During an attack by Private 1st Class Pekia's company against a strongly defended hostile ridge on which several dual purpose guns were emplaced. The leader of an adjacent fire group was wounded and fell on the enemy held side of the ridge. Quick to act, although fully aware of the great danger involved, Private First Class Pekia courageously went 
to the aid of his fallen comrade and succeeded in treating and evacuating him before he himself was wounded. His initiative and grave concern for the life of another were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, um, H. Sul L. Sullivan, Secretary of the Navy. This is a continuation of the interview with Leonard John Sam Thomas Peckia. The date is January 16th, 2018. My name is Lance Peckia. Leonard, I'm going to ask you when you went on Japan, after the war was ended, you went to Japan, right? Yes. And uh, were you one of the first to land on Japan? Yes, one of the first to land on Japan. Uh-huh. What was that like? What, what did you do? And originally I was supposed to take a squad out first, but then they decided that we'd walk off the, just walk off the ship, just walk off the ship. Uh-huh. And no problem at all. Right. Did you see civilians on the, on the, on Japan? Were there civilians walking? Uh, no, they were all military. All military? Dressed in military clothes. Uh-huh. How, how did the Japanese react to you guys? How did, how did the Japanese soldiers react when you walked on to Japan? They bowed. They showed us that they were all through with fighting. That was it. Oh, okay. Um, did you, uh, um, w when you were in the service, did everybody was, um, felt like they were a family, right? The soldiers, they felt yeah. really close to each yeah. other. Yeah. Um, so did you feel like you were a part of the, 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 the Marine tradition you know, and, and, and made lots of friends, some friends? Yes, always. Uh-huh. Um, and when you, were, when you were overseas, how did you communicate with your parents? Did you write letters to your parents when you were over there? Not very often, because we didn't have much time. No, not much time? But no. you, you, you wrote a couple letters, one yes, or two? Yes. Oh, okay. And uh, where, where were you when you heard that the war was over? Where was I? Were you on board ship? On, on when the war was over? Yeah, when did you, you, yeah, when you first heard that the war ended? Uh, where do, you, do you remember where you were? I think no. I was on uh, Were you on uh, Guadalcanal or no, Japan? No, no, none of those islands. Oh no. Just on when the war was over, I was in the hospital. Oh. oh. Okay, um What when did you come home? When did you get to go home? Was it after you got out of the hospital? Or after you were on Japan? They sent you home. After I was on Japan. Right. Did, yeah. did, so that, where, they flew you home? They fly you to Minneapolis, or they flew me to Duluth. Duluth. That's where they discharge 
the Marines and men, men all, mm -hmm. in Minnesota. Right, right. What, um, what did your family think when you came home and their neighbors? What did they think? Did they greet you or they had? Oh, yeah. They greet me, greeted me with, with many of the stamps they had. But then they were finished with the stamps, and I'm not quite sure what, uh -huh. what happened following. So your mother and father were pretty glad you got home okay, right? Your, your mother and father were very happy you returned home? Oh, uh, yes, she was uh -huh. very happy. Um, did you ever may, may, did you ever keep in contact with any of the soldiers that you served with over the years? Did you ever keep in contact with any of them? With any of the, my parents? No, with your so, with the soldiers that you served with. Did you? Uh, I think one or two because I was busy trying to get into college. Right, right, uh-huh. And uh, okay, um, did you ever get to any reunions? Did you ever go to any of the reunions for the? Uh, oh, many reunions. Yes. Uh-huh. For the green parachutists. And, and the 5th Division. Oh, okay. Both two outfits. Mm -hmm. And at one of the reunions, did you meet, meet someone in the elevator that you knew? Yeah. Could you tell me about that? What happened? Oh, the guy next to me says, Hey, you saved my life. I said, What do you mean? He says, Oh, I'm on uh, Bougainville, when I got on the boat, I could only get on the funnel, the small, uh, 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 section on on the uh, Hagen's boat, and you held me on, so I wouldn't fall into the ocean. Oh, that's what he said. And I didn't even realize that. No. Um, after, after you uh, got out of the military, you went to you went to school. Eventually, you went to the University of Colorado. No, I went to the Hibbing Junior College. Oh, oh, you started. Make up some of my grades. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which I did, so I would be able to get into a senior college. Oh, okay. And what college was that? Was that the University of Colorado? Yes. Right. And you. Uh, That's got, where got, I got my master's. A master's in, in what? What was your master's in? In physical education. Physical education and, and health. Oh, okay. And where did you end up finding a job after you got out of college? At San Diego. In San Bernardino? San Bernardino. San Bernardino. Yeah, San Diego. San Bernardino. Uh huh. I've, I've heard it was difficult to find work, or you, you went around. It was very difficult to find work. You drove around from school. With. You drove around from school to school. No. No. I. It was very difficult. So you, uh, what was your first job? Teaching at Pacific. Oh. Uh, No, it was a junior high, wasn't it? No. I mean... No, it right. was... Uh, my first job was... Uh, 
Was it at Sturgis? A uh, one, two. No, not Sturgis, but one of those. Uh huh. But that that was a junior high school, right? Or a, right? But you 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 eventually got to Pacific High School. Yeah. And you I were eventually got to Pacific High School. And what did you teach at Pacific High School? What did you teach? Physical education, and I, I, I taught. Uh, Physical, physical education, and whatever involved in physical education. Right, right. And you were, um, what they call it, the, the, the reserves or the National Guard? What was it you, you taught? National Guard or the reserves or something? Oh, yes. Well, I had the National Guard Army. I was... Uh, elevated the captain, a uh, captain in the uh, Army uh, National uh, uh, Local Guard. Uh huh. I mean, uh, State Guard. Right. And so that was it. I was, they, they gave me a, a, a rank of captain in the State Guard. Oh, okay. Ask to, to be able to work with with uh, the uh, boys, and many of them felt really thankful about it because they 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 felt that it did them a lot of good. Oh, okay, good. And after Pacific High, you, you went to another high school? Yeah, San Bernardino. San Bernardino? High school. And you were a, a teacher and a coach? What did you coach? Which, which sports did you coach? F football. Football? Yes. And were you the... Were you the line coach, or what? What kind of were you? Did were you a line coach? Did you yes, coach the line coach? The line coach. Uh huh. And after San Bernardino High School, where did you go to teach? To Cypress. College. Cypress College. Yeah. And you were a coach there too? Yes, football and line coach and track, head track coach. Oh. Head track coach. At Cypress College. And that's where you finished, you retired from Cypress yes, College? I retired from there. Right, okay. For 30, 31 years. Right, same. right, right, right. <laughs> That was a long time. Okay, just to summarize, what, could you think how the, how the military, being in the military, how that affected your life? Um, any lessons you learned from being in the service, or did it make a better person out of you? Or, you know, what, what are your thoughts on what the military, how that affected you? Did it make you a stronger person? Whoa. Made me much stronger person because of of the experiences I had in the service, and but yet a, a lot of. Uh, A lot of sympathy for people. Right, right. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, war? Do you think it's war in, in general? You were in the war. It, it was a, You felt it was a necessary thing to it's, do, or is what it's do you? It's terrible. Right. It should never have a war. It's 
crazy. Right. So is there anything else that you you might want to say? Um, we could finish up the interview, Leonard. Leonard? Oh. Is there anything else that you might want to say? Oh, I about you. No, uh, yeah, it's okay. Is, is there anything else you might want to uh, say about uh, your experience in uh, World War II and the Marines? Uh, for for some for I'm just others, if we don't have an overall war again, so that a lot of these young people are exposed to it no more. Okay, thank you, Leonard. Is that it? That's it. Say thank you. Bye bye. Ooh. Um, Leonard. Um, did you ever lose a stripe? Did, did you ever lose a stripe when you were in the Marines? Did I lose a stripe? Yes. I think I never issued the stripe because of, of uh, two or th one of the things that we did after the, the first exposure to war. What? We, Go ahead. We, we didn't do our duty working, uh, stocking the ship for battle. We left it up to the, our minor people. And you were demoted for that? Yeah. They took a strike? Well, or? I was never elevated. Oh, you were never elevated? No. Oh, because of that. Oh, okay. Even though I had two years of, of college. Did you ever uh, go to Los Angeles when you were on leave? Did you go to Los Angeles? When you were on leave once? Did I go to Los Angeles? Yes. When, when I was on, uh, on leave? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And when you came back, were you late coming back? Yes. Yeah. Well, how late were you? Pardon? You were... You, you, how late were you coming back from Los Angeles? We didn't try to hide. We walked right down the main street. Oh, were you a day? And, were and you the major sauce? Were you? A, oh, oh, uh huh. So then we were going to go overseas uh, to train for. Then we found out it was a year later, and. So you did, you, the problem was he was going to give us 30 days leave and that was just about the time that we would be on the ocean. So that, that took care of the major's problem. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Pop. Is that it? Thank you. That's it. Okay. okay.